Hello and welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week we have new tech from Strava, some sexy carbon wheels from Hunt, some sexy carbon respirator masks from 3T. Manon is going to be judge, jury and executioner once again in the bike vault, plus bringing us some more pain caves. Meanwhile, as most of the world is now seemingly in social isolation, we ask the most important question. If you could only have one bike for solo bike rides, what would it be? Oh yes. Uh, now, Ollie is uh, is actually on holiday this week. Um, I know, I don't think he's gone anywhere. I think he's still in his living room. But uh, but yeah, he was supposed to be in Mallorca this week, poor lad, uh, riding his bike. But obviously he's had to stay at home. I've got no idea what he's going to be doing. Um, perhaps he's going to be plotting his revenge on the hour record, like some kind of cartoon supervillain. Uh, anyway, you have unfortunately got me this week. Uh, but I am about to be joined by Jeremy Powers. And here he is, in fact, Jeremy Powers. How are you doing, mate? Dude, I'm doing great. We're here in social isolation in the United States, but I have to say my family is here and we're spending a lot of time together, so it's not all bad side. Good stuff, mate, good stuff. All right, now we're all well aware of the situation, Jeremy. We're currently facing the hopefully temporary end of the group ride. If we're riding at all, we're riding solo. And so I've been wondering if you could choose one bike for this new world of riding, what would it be? Like a bike for the apocalypse? <laughs> well, hopefully, hopefully not quite that bad. But no, I mean, basically the reason I was thinking about this, okay, is that uh, I didn't know the day I was going into social isolation. So the road bike that I have at home, and I appreciate at this point, I am well aware of how amazingly fortunate I am in having a choice of road bikes. But the road bike that I have at home was simply the one that I was riding back from work on that day. Now, as it happens, I'm exceedingly happy because I've got my aero bike. As you can see next to me, is my beloved Canyon Air Road. Okay. Well, that, that'd be a good candidate for like cutting through the wind on every inch of the ride. Because I know some countries are limiting the amount of time that you can ride outside. So in theory, with an aero road bike, you'd be going as far as you possibly could in the allotted amount of time. So yeah, yeah exactly. That is exactly my point. Yeah. Well, if you're going that way of thinking, then why not just bust out the TT bike? You could cover way more ground. Well, that is quite a good point. Actually, the time trial bike is the ultimate loner's bike. I'll grant you. But then... You've also got to admit, Jeremy, that this is not the time for falling off and injuring yourself. And while I'm not saying it's guaranteed that you're going to hit the deck while you're riding your TT bike, they are very sketchy, aren't they? Maybe this is more about escape, you know, kind of preserving your mental health as well as your physical health. And so, so perhaps like a timeless classic is in order. What do you think when you're talking about a timeless classic, like a Colmago C40 or something like that? Well, that would definitely, definitely fit the bill. Yeah, a C40 or maybe like a kind of, you know, a titanium road bike, one for all ages uh, with rim brakes, of course. So you don't need to stress about getting your disc brakes bled at your local bike shop that may or may not be shut. Basically anything where it's sort of the ride quality is, is sort of favored over outright speed, you know, where like it kind of soothes yourself as opposed to a ride where you just smash yourself. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean I don't really think you would choose that bike though, would you? <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't. I mean, yeah, although there is no worry about getting dropped anymore because we're not riding with other people, there is of course still Strava, isn't there? So, you know, there's, there's still a reason to go fast. <laughs> Firstly, I don't even know why we're talking about these bikes because if you could choose one bike, it's definitely a gravel bike. You can ride it on road, you can ride it off road, it feels good and yeah, it, it just, it's the right bike for all conditions. Well, yeah. No, I tell you what, Jerry, there is one last type of bike I think that's worthy of consideration for a time like this, and that is an e-cargo bike, okay? A bike that's actually useful as well as enjoyable to ride. And I don't know whether you've seen some of these, but there's an awful lot of really good news stories at the moment about how people with bikes are actually doing some genuinely good things for society at the moment, whether it's, it's delivering to people that can't get out or whether it's, you know, like couriers still able to deliver food and stuff to people, even just transport, getting to and from work, particularly for key workers. You know, you can still ride it, but you can also do stuff with it. So, you know, maybe, maybe cargo bikes. Yeah. I'm still going for a gravel bike, dude, because seriously, at the end of the day, if I gotta like pack up the whole kit and caboodle and I gotta throw the trailer on the back, 
dude, I want to be versatile. I don't want to be out here messing around with some arrow, flared, this, that, and the other thing. I'm going gravel <laughs> all the way. It's in my DNA. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going I'm for an aero bike, but that's, we've had our say now, Jeremy. I think it's over to the viewers, isn't it? Super interested to know if you could choose one bike, any bike for solo riding at the moment, what would it be? Aero bike, timeless classic. Would it be a gravel bike? Let us know in the comment section down below and also maybe vote up there as well. It's now time to take a look at some of your pain caves that you've been submitting on the app. Now, no doubt you've been spending a lot of time in these pain caves over the last few weeks, as some of us can only ride inside, so it's quite important to have a nice setup. So if you have a pain cave that you want to submit, just go to the GCN app and submit it there, and maybe we'll feature it in next week's show. So first up, we have Crispin Williams. And he's um, had an old greenhouse and replaced it with a new office forward slash pain cave. Got his turbo mat, trainer, bike setup, got a screen and a fan. Fans are very important because I can imagine it can get quite hot in that shed when you're working out. Very nice, very nice setup. So next up we have Woodhams upgraded a freezing cold garage to a cozy pain cave. Oh yes, yeah, so that's not much of a pain cave before. But after, that's a really good upgrade. I like this. Got even got the helmet and shoes on the walls. That's that's a big upgrade. Done very well there. Nice. And next up we have Ravin with a garage conversion. Car out, bike in. Wow, this is very swanky. Got some nice red lighting in there. This is like, um, reminds me of like a spin classroom where they have, where it's quite dark and they have lights. Got the GCN tech channel on there. I like it. Nice logo. Very nice. This is a good setup. I wish mine looked like that. So thank you very much for sending your pain caves in to the GCN tech channel. We look forward to your submissions next week. Thanks, man. On right then, what is hot in the world of tech this week? Well, unfortunately, you've got to say the usual flurry of tech activity that's centered around the Spring Classics has been somewhat disrupted due to coronavirus. Firstly, there being no Spring Classics to speak of, but also many, many brands out there are actually battling with coronavirus in one way, shape or form. Now, one brand that's battling harder than most, you'd think, are 3T partly because they're based right in the epicenter of the disaster that's unfolding in Italy. Now, last week we said uh, that they'd been putting together this bundle of 3T Bike Plus Elite Trainer that was heavily discounted and with all profits going to help local hospitals, which was amazing. And you've got to say, particularly hands off, hats off to Elite, who could have sold out of trainers a gazillion times over, but they were there doing what they could to help out local hospitals. Uh, but now 3T uh, have stopped making their carbon torno cranks in their Italian factory, and they've started making parts for respirator masks out of carbon instead, which I think is just brilliant. Hats off to them. Uh, now elsewhere, Strava have been working really hard and they have been able to release their new update, which adds additional functionality to their route planner. Now it basically taps in to the 3 billion activities that are archived on Strava. And they've built this algorithm which allows it to suggest routes from any point in the world. Actually, I say available anywhere in the world. I don't actually know that. I'm sure if you tried to stick a pin in a point in Antarctica and ask to go for a road ride, it might struggle with that. But uh, but anyway, you need uh, a Strava subscription for this. Um, and then basically when you end up in the route explorer function, you can choose what type of activity you do. So, so running, if you really must, uh, or cycling, of course. And then you can choose how far you want to go. Uh, and it will give you three options at that desired length. Uh, so for cycling, you go for 20K, 30K, 50K, 100K, Wells Your Oyster. You can also choose how much climbing you do in that ride. And then you can also choose 
choose what surface you're riding on. And it doesn't just cross-reference the route against the data on open source maps. As Strava say, they also reference it against the types of bikes that their users are using on those routes, which is pretty cool. Now, one thing that I'd wondered was whether or not it can differentiate between really popular roads that are great to ride and those that get you to and from work. Because I don't know about you, a lot of my Strava rides are commutes. Um, and also, I don't actually say that they are commutes most of the time, I'm just too lazy. So the good news is uh, that Strava will automatically discount any that someone has tagged as a commute, but it will also discount those rides that look suspiciously like commutes as well. So there's basically no chance you're gonna actually end up at my office. So it seems like a really good thing to try out. If you're traveling somewhere new, be it on holiday or with work, you can automatically get rides that you know are good to ride because loads of people already ride them. That may not be particularly relevant in the current situation, but what might be relevant is actually trying it out uh, around where you live at home, see whether or not you can find some new and different routes to ride. The only thing that I did wonder is actually how it's gonna to manage to find those amazing secret roads uh, because they're not popular. So maybe there is still a place of a good old fashioned sleuthing either with a map or indeed just stalking a local rider and, uh, and stealing their routes. Um, anyway, changing the subject now from software to hardware, I am a sucker for lovely, lovely wheels and Hunt have just announced two new pairs of wheels that are impressively light and they claim impressively fast. They're called the 44UD and the 55UD. UD referring to unidirectional carbon spokes, which Hunt say are stronger than steel. They say that they have greater vibration damping qualities than steel and are also lighter than steel. Uh, and the numbers, by the way, refer to the rim depth. Now, weights, as I said, are impressive. So the 44s come in at 1,398 grams for the pair. The 55s come in at 1,456 grams for the pair. And in terms of aerodynamics, Hunt have, of course, tested them both thoroughly in the wind tunnel, and they're claiming that they stack up exceedingly well against the competition. So we like about wind tunnel tests, and I know people have strong opinions on them, but one thing that is remarkably impressive, and you can't refute, is the price. Uh, they come in at a shade over 1,000 pounds, and also they come with a lifetime crash replacement, which is great. Those seem to be cropping up more and more carbon wheels now, and it's an absolutely amazing development. Now, right, lastly, I'm gonna leave you uh, in hot new tech with a study, actually, which uh, I found, or rather I observed a link uh, on my favorite Twitter account, Cycling Science. And it is a link to a study called Bicycle Aerodynamics, History, State of the Art, and Future Perspectives. And if you're already an aero nerd, you will probably be familiar with one of its authors, a guy called Bert Blocken, who's based at Eindhoven University. And he's already authored a whole stack of exceedingly meaningful research into bicycle aerodynamics. If you are that way inclined, I highly suggest you go and have a read. We will stick a link to the study in the description beneath this video. Um, if you haven't got an hour possibly more to spend, uh, then I will leave you with a factoid. We often think, or at least I do anyway, that wind tunnel testing in bikes is a relatively recent thing, but no. Apparently, the first recorded wind tunnel study was in 1953 by T.M. Kawamura, uh, and his paper was called Wind Drag of Bicycles. And the second thing is that the authors conclude with, in their words, forgive me, I'm gonna read this, the many degrees of design freedom that remain in bike design leave ample room for further aerodynamic innovations and improvements, which is great. I can breathe a sigh of relief because it means there's gonna be loads more amazing tech still coming down the pipeline. And Ollie may yet be Eddie Merckx's hour record. Okay, it's time now for screw riding upgrades, buy upgrades instead. And as ever, we're gonna start with the results from last week. The winner, remember, gets a GCN cap. Oh yes. Now, 
we gave you two pretty banging uh, bike transformations, I think, last week. Uh, first of all, we had FR Castro's gravel bike for his young niece, uh, which was super cool, wasn't it? Uh, and then we also had uh, Yucca's restored Olmo, and it was super, super close. Uh, it was 53% of the votes going towards the Olmo. So congratulations uh, to Yucca there. That was uh, a fine win, but a close one nonetheless. Uh, right, this week, uh, first up we got this from Julian Goulding, um, who said that he found this old healing commuter, which is apparently a classic New Zealand bike. I didn't know there was such a thing, but apparently there is. Um, in a forgotten bush, or forgotten about in a bush, perhaps. Um, now, with a budget of just 80 New Zealand dollars and a whole pile of mountain bike rental parts, uh, he brought her back to life. And I'm kind of struggling to fathom this because uh, he's added a derailleur and disc brakes, uh, not to mention a stem conversion and internal cables. Um, plus a sweet paint job, I think you'll agree. And it just looks absolutely incredible, doesn't it? I mean, genuinely, mind-blowing. Uh, yeah, I could look at that all day, quite frankly. Um, then, what is it up against? Uh, up against this from PZR Higgs. Um, this is an old Claude Butler. He said he bought it originally as a frame set off eBay, built it up, then got bored of it. So, he's had it powder coated in black with a sparkle in the lacquer. Oh yeah, uh, new pink decals, pink bar tape, uh, BLB chrome fork, uh, 3T bars, polished stem, and just look at that. I mean, that looks awesome, doesn't it? I'm gonna say I'm biased, but I think any time a Physique Arione appears on a bike, the bike looks fast. But it's kind of reminiscent of like a classic Colnago, particularly with that straight bladed fork on there. And the kind of like, well, I just, I just think that's great. I genuinely would not know which one to choose. Uh, you got the one that was dragged out of a bush, literally, uh, and restored on a shoestring to a pretty cool looking town bike. And then you got this, which is just like now a mint looking road bike. I don't know. Anyway, it's not up to me to decide. It is up to you to decide. Uh, so make sure you cast your vote and we will give you the results next week. Now it's time for the bike vault, my favourite part of the show, where you submit pictures of your bikes and I vote if they're nice or super nice. And if they're super nice, the bell gets rung. If you do disagree with my judgments, you can have your say by voting on the bikes in the app. Now, first in, we have this from PJ Noki, and this is Specialized Range Pro with Durace Di2, and it's got purple glitter. Oh my days, I wish Ollie could see this, he would love it. The valves are lined up, the wheels, the tires, no chimney. Have left the light on though. Could have taken the light off for the picture and then put it back on. But I mean, it's got purple glitter. And in that case, super, super, super nice. On to the next bike from Grant Bullard. And this is taken in Cape Town. That is a very, very nice background. And I mean, the bike's pretty nice too. Matte black bike, gold chain, a Trek Madone, very nice. No chimney, valves are lined up, wheels, tires, check, check, check. Nice bottle cages. That is picture perfect. Picture perfect. In that case. On to the next bike from Andy H. And this was taken in the lanes of Northumberland. And it is a Ridley Noah Fast. Ooh. Um, with Shimano Durace. That's a nice frame, I haven't seen with them before. That's stem. That's a slammed stem. No, no chimney to be seen there. It's a nice background as well. I think that is a super nice. Well done. We're off to a very good start in the bike vault this week. Very, very good start. Hopefully we can keep it going. Next in from David C13. This is a frame made from Columbus MS tubing. This is a Me Pursuit with a Campagnolo record pistol cranks and a HKK chain. Uh, Mavic Pro rims with Campagnolo hubs. 
Wow. I mean, it's in Biggie Smalls. <laughs> He's lined the cranks up. It's a bit different when it's a fixie, a bit less to get right, but I mean, it looks good to me. I'm gonna give. Now we're on to our last bike in the bike fall this week. And this one is in from Eden J. Spencer. Um, and it was taken in Palmer Springs. Um, so this is a Trek Madone SLR6 disc. Uh, got Shimano Altegra with Bontrager wheels. Wow, I'm just gonna put it out there. I really, really like um, pastel colors too on bikes. Just, just saying. And when I was on um, track drops, we had a bike that was in a pretty much exactly this blue pastel color. It was very nice. It was called Miami Green. Uh, I was a big fan of that, that color. Um, and this is very nice. I really like the fade from pink to blue, bluey green. Um, I mean, a little bit far away to see if the valves are lined up. And I think it is in Biggie Smalls. Um, no chimney, nice, um, very nice stem. Black handlebar tape, black saddle, nice black wheels. Cranks lined up. Do you know what? I think that is a super nice. Now remember, you can vote on those bikes in the GCN app if you do disagree with my judgments. So head over to the app and get voting. Right, that is all we've got time for on the GCN Tech Show for this week. And I say that because I need to get my bike out of my living room before I get busted. Not, not allowed them in here at all. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you to Manon and Jeremy as well for, for joining me on the show this week. Normal service will resume next week. Ollie will be back from plotting his revenge on the hour record or whatever he's been doing this week. Thanks again. Please stay safe and give this video a big thumbs up. That's my dog. What are you doing, Willow? Do you need to go out? You're not getting a treat. <sighs> right, Willow, say hello to the GCN Tech audience. You're not gonna play ball, are you?